the shores of Johor feeling the effects of last week's oil spill in Singapore waters. We examine what is being done and the cost as containment and cleanup efforts progress. And where does all that oily sand go? A big part of cleaning up last Friday's oil spill involves removing and treating oil-soaked sand from affected shorelines. CNA speaks to one of the key companies involved. Workers at toxic waste management company Mencast Offshore and Marine are hard at work, emptying bags of oil-soaked sand and debris. All of this was collected the past few days from East Coast Park and the beaches of Sentosa. An excavator picks them up and then transfers them to a shaker that separates sand from the other debris. Then it's off to a heating drum where it's heated at 550 to 600 degrees Celsius to separate oil from sand. In our capacity per day that we can do, it's about 50 to 60 tonne of uh, contaminated sand. And uh, yeah, that's the range that we have. Probably each tonne, we can go through like about 45 minutes of treatment process. The sand is then tested for oil content. Much of what's been collected had oil content of 2 to 5 percent. A safe level would be at 0.1 percent. Once cleaned, where the treated sand goes depends on factors like where it came from and what the authorities permit. There are other options besides returning the sand to the beaches. We are looking into like, you know, sand bag it, okay, or probably into the directions of mixing into concrete for buildings, not buildings, maybe some structures. Yeah, it, we, we even uh, had a discussion to, do, to explore into uh, road tasks, yeah. But of course, this is still in the pipeline of discussion. Mencast says the market rate for sand treatment is about 400 to 500 Singapore dollars per tonne. It's collected about 140 tonnes of oily sand since Tuesday and treated 10 to 12 tonnes of it. They expect there will be more. And part of the cleanup also involves deploying containment booms. But how much does it take to lay down these tubes? Nasira Rohim speaks to one company that is behind most of the effort. These tubes are doing more than just float. They're stopping the spread of the oil spill around Sentosa. TNT Salvage Asia is a company that specialises in responding to emergencies like this one and responsible for much of the containment booms deployed. They are responsible for about 70% of the booms so far, but their work goes beyond deployment. They also have to make sure booms remain in good working condition and repair them as needed. Wind, weather, thunder showers, and then strong currents over in this area, especially in the Santosa lagoons, it's very, very strong over there. And then the rise of tide, which can hit our booms quite, quite hard at times, you know. So we have to take all these things into account before we really uh, lay the booms. And sometimes it is a trial and error method, you can't just wait. Laying the booms can be expensive. Just a three-meter marine spill containment boom can cost around 230 Singapore dollars, according to one local safety equipment retailer. TNT Salvage Asia has laid out around 2.5 kilometers worth of them. There is also the manpower costs. The company has about 85 people on this job, including international specialists from countries like India and South America. They say the number is pretty standard considering the size of the spill but declined talking about the cost just yet. When we are responding to the emergency, we don't start calculating the cost. It will come later and it will be taken care of because insurance is there for every all these incidents, you know. The, the, the focus had been on efficiency and uh, speed, which is, which is very, very good this time around. Singapore authorities said this week that progress is being made in the cleanup, but it will take some time before things get back to normal.